You stand in the bedroom. The air becomes tight. You try and stand still to keep your balance. Your vision becomes slightly blurred, and as you try and focus, you see a distorted shape in front of you. It takes the shape of a woman, taller than yourself. You blink, and she's gone, but the strong smell of perfume is lingering in the air. The air pressure in the room becomes normal, but you didn't experience it on your own. Others in the room saw it too. Welcome to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. I've released this special edition on the anniversary of the death of Jimi Hendrix to highlight the paranormal activity that was once experienced in the two houses that are next to each other, where Jimi Hendrix and the composer Handel both lived. I've tried to write the music in this episode in the style of Handel and Hendrix, but in my own style. Please enjoy. Twenty-five Brook Street in Mayfair, London, was built in 1723, and its first occupant was the German-born British Baroque composer George Frederick Handel, after he'd been appointed as composer to the Chapel Royal for King George II. He was paid the yearly sum of £400, which would be around £72,000 in today's money. Handel was born in Germany in 1685 and trained as a composer in Halle before becoming a composer in Hamburg and Italy. In June 1710, Prince George, the Elector of Hanover, made him master of the chapel choir, but he left after only a year. In 1712, Handel moved to London, England, and by 1727, he became a British citizen. While he was living at 25 Brook Street, he composed most of his works at the house. He also used the house for rehearsal, inviting many musicians over. Handel never married, and his only companion was a manservant. The only women thought to have ever visited the house were two soprano singers, Fortina Bordoni, and Francesca Cusoni, who were both known to have a furious temper. When Handel was travelling back from Germany to London in 1750, he was seriously injured in a carriage accident, which caused problems with his eye. In August 1758, a fake eye surgeon called himself Chevalier John Taylor performed eye surgery on Handel's eye, after which his health deteriorated and he died on the 14th of April, 1759, at his house on Brook Street, aged 74. He was given full state honours, and his body was interred at Westminster Abbey, with more than 3,000 mourners in attendance. Born Johnny Allen Hendricks in Seattle, Washington on the 27th of November, 1942. James Marshall Jimi Hendrix is known as one of the most influential electric guitarists and contemporary musicians of the 20th century. Jimi Hendrix started playing the guitar at the age of 15, being influenced by the great blues and jazz players of that time. In 1961, he joined the US Army but was discharged by the end of the year due to an ankle injury caused during a parachute jump. Not long after leaving the army, Hendrix moved to Clarksville and then Nashville, Tennessee to pursue a musical career. After playing the Chitlin Circuit, which was a collection of venues across the eastern, southern and upper midwest of the United States that was created by and for black performers, due to racial segregation in the United States. 
Hendrix was recognised and asked to join the Isley Brothers, which he did until he played for Little Richard until 1965. He then played guitar for Curtis Knight and the Squires until he moved to England in 1966. Within months of living in England, he'd had three top ten hits with the Jimi Hendrix experience. Hey Joe, Purple Haze and The Wind Cries Mary. The upper floors of 23 Brook Street became home to Hendrix in 1968, after his girlfriend, Kathy Etchingham, found the flat being advertised in an evening newspaper for only £30 a week. He lived at the flat until 1969, and once referred to it as the only home he had ever had. Hendrix only had a four-year mainstream career, as his life was cut short on the 18th of September, 1970. On the 17th of September, he'd spent the day in London with Monica Danneman, who was the only witness to his final hours. In the early hours of the 18th of September, Monica found Hendrix unresponsive in her apartment at the Samarkand Hotel in Notting Hill. She called for an ambulance, and he was taken to St Mary Abbott's Hospital, where they attempted to resuscitate him. He was pronounced dead at 12.45pm. He'd taken 18 times the recommended prescribed amount of Monica's sleeping pills. Jimi Hendrix's body was taken back to Seattle and was interred at Greenwood Cemetery with family and friends in attendance. Hendrix was 27 years old, the same age as Brian Jones, Alan Wilson, Jim Morrison and Janis Joplin, who all died in the same era, which were all known as the 27 Club. 25 Brook Street and the upper part of 23 Brook Street are now the Handel Hendrix in London exhibition, which celebrate the life and works of both musicians. There have been sightings of a woman in 25 Brook Street. He usually leaves behind a strong lingering smell of perfume. Some say that Jimi Hendrix witnessed the woman when he was living in his flat, but his girlfriend, Kathy Etchingham, recalls him saying that he'd seen the ghost of Handel in a mirror. He described him as an old man wearing a nightgown. He had grey hair that was tied in a pigtail. On the 15th of July, 2001, the Telegraph newspaper reported that 25 Brook Street was going to be hosting an exorcism after two people had seen a ghost while they were preparing the house to be opened as a museum to handle. The Handel House Trust contacted a local Roman Catholic priest who wished to remain anonymous to carry out the exorcism ritual in the bedroom where Handel had died. The priest told the Telegraph that the ritual would involve sprinkling holy water and reading a prayer which would hopefully move the spirit on. A fundraiser for the Handel House Trust, Martin Egglestone, was worried that having a ghost in the house could deter customers and felt that it would be safer to have it exercised. He said that he was witness to the apparition twice, seeing it in the bedroom of the house. He first saw the ghost in June 2001, while he was helping to measure up for some new curtains. He said that the air suddenly became thick and that he saw a shape, slightly higher than he was, like the imprint that you have on the back of your retina when you close your eyes after you've been looking into the sun for too long. He said that the shape seemed to be of a woman. On the second occasion, another member of staff was present and also witnessed the apparition. They said that there was no malevolent feeling. It felt like the pressure you get when you brush past somebody in the tube and they are too close to you. Staff have also reported the lingering smell of perfume in the bedroom. Thank you for listening to Ghost Tales by the Fireside. If you enjoy this channel, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. It's very appreciated. 
You can find more information about episodes on the website, ghosttales.co.uk. There's a Facebook page, Ghost Tales Podcast, and you can also find me on Instagram at Ghost Tales Podcast. This podcast will be out monthly and is available on most podcast platforms. All music, research, writing, production, art and sound effects are all my own work.